what's going on everyone welcome back to the channel I want to thank you guys for hanging out watching showing your support it really means a lot today we're going to be setting up the wfc 5210 for sublimation printing now you may have never heard of this model it's not as popular as the 7000 series wide format printers or the eco tank series printers but if you're looking to add an eight and a half inch wide standard format printer or an a4 printer if you're outside of the u.s and canada you might want to consider this one it's got blazing fast speed, a high duty cycle of up to 45,000 prints a month, and the ability to use these really high capacity ink packs if you have it fitted with a chipless firmware. So let's go ahead and get this one out of the box and get it set up. Okay, so now that we have the printer unboxed and got all the tape off of it, it's time to go ahead and get the ink ready for the printer. So what we're going to do is start off with sublimation ink. So since we're going to be using sublimation ink, I want to start off with sublimation ink. I want to initialize the printer with sublimation ink. So what I'm going to do is take the chip off of the initialization ink pack. I'm going to place that chip onto the refill tank. I'll do that for the other three. And then it's time to fill the cartridges. Now I'll be using Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation Ink, but you can use any high quality sublimation of pigment ink. Now you'll be here all day trying to fill this up with a syringe. It's 300 milliliters of ink. But uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put in some mini funnels for you so that you can pour it directly into the cartridge using the funnel. So we'll go ahead and fill this cartridge up. And then we'll fill up the other three. And now we're ready to begin the printer setup. All right, so we got our tanks filled. We'll go ahead and unplug these vent holes and make sure we don't forget. And we'll turn the printer on for the first time. And it's going to ask you for your language. So we'll set that to English. And then we'll set our date and time. And then it's going to ask you for the ink. So what we'll do is we'll remove these uh, ink pack trays that comes with the printer and we're going to install our ink tank. So we're going to line up those grooves on the bottom of the tank with the grooves on the inside of the printer. We'll slide those in. You'll hear a snap. What we'll do is we'll close this door and it'll continue to pump the sublimation ink through these tubes into the print head and charge and prime the system. And once it finishes that, it's going to ask you for the paper size. In my case, I'm going to be using the A sub 120. So I'll go ahead and extend that tray, put my paper in, going to select legal, premium matte. And then I'm going to set up the Wi-Fi so that when we go to set up the Epson driver later, it's already on the network and it makes the install of the driver a lot easier. We'll go ahead and do a quick nozzle check. Good. All right. Now we'll jump on the computer, install the driver and the chipless firmware. Back on the computer, I'm going to go to the Epson web page, download and install the printer driver. I'm not going to go over this in a lot of detail because setting up the Epson printer driver on Windows is pretty much the same for all the printers. But since we set up that Wi-Fi earlier, it's going to find it on the network and install the drivers pretty quickly. Just make sure uh, you turn the automatic updates off. You can set it as a default printer if you want, though. So once that's finished, I'll go ahead and set up my printing profiles from a paper. I use uh, ASUB 120G legal so i'm going to go ahead and hit legal premium matte and turn the high speed off under the more options tab underneath the advanced i'm going to go to color mode and select epson vivid and set my colors to cyan 2 magenta negative 20 and yellow negative 15. now that'll get me in the ballpark and then i can hit the sliders later and tweak my um and tweak my prints uh, but that'll get me in the ballpark so then I'll go over and start to install the chipless firmware. I'm not going to go over this in detail at all. I go over this in my um, 
7710 video where I installed the sys and the chipless firmware. So if you want to see it step by step, you can go there and check it out. So now we got the chipless firmware installed, the printer driver installed, we're ready to print. So I'll go ahead and get my image ready. I'll select the profile I made early and we'll print it. Now I'm gonna also print this on three other printers and uh, get some time comparisons on them. So first we'll start with the wide formats and we'll start with the 7710, one of my favorites. Uh, it's a classic printer, a lot of people have it, or the 7720, so the times should probably be similar on the 7720 as well. This one came in at seven minutes and six seconds. It was actually the slowest printer in the whole test. Uh, moving on to the new kid on the block, we got the 7820. This actually replaced the 7710, and uh, it finished up at four minutes and five seconds. It's a whole three minutes faster than the 7710. Uh, now we'll go to the uh, standard format printers or the eight and a half inch printers, and we got the uh, 4734 and this replaced my 3640 that I had previously and um, it's, it's a good printer I push it a lot and um, this one actually came in at 305 three minutes and five seconds but it didn't print the entire page for some reason so uh, we're gonna count this one as inconclusive but it probably would have took a lot longer if it printed the entire image and finally, that'll bring us back around to this uh, WFC 5210. Um, it came in at 2 minutes and 17 seconds, man, and no banding, no pizza wheels. The image came out really clean. So uh, now we'll get into some of the pros and cons. So some pros, pros are the speed. You've seen 2 minutes, 17 seconds for a full page. That's pretty fast. The price. I paid uh, $159 for this. Uh, not really, not really pricey at all. Availability should be really good. It's not a popular printer, so you know you, the odds of you finding it are pretty high. And the ink capacity, ink capacity is 300 milliliters. So even if you're a heavy printer, you should be able to put the ink tanks in and not check on it again for another three weeks to a month or so. Uh, some of the cons, the initial fill will be pretty high, a lot higher than, the, well, not a lot higher, but it'll be higher than the printer for the ink. Um, the chipless firmware is $50, but you only have to buy it once, but the other chipless firmware is like 35 so this chipless is a little bit higher. Uh, and the eight and a half inch wide printing width, you're going to be limited to some of the smaller projects, but, you know, smaller projects still make a lot of money. Now, I definitely recommend the printer, and I'll put links in the description for the tanks and the ink if you want to give it a shot. And if you haven't, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll keep trying to come out with new content. Thanks for watching.